I think uh, they may in an amended complaint make better allegations factually, but there is inferential evidence that Fauci, Pelosi and Harris had specifically requested each of those platforms to remove Trump from those platforms. Some of that's based on some of their public statements. Some of that's based on some of the emails that came out from the FOIA request with Fauci and Zuckerberg. There was much more collusion. Some of that is indirectly referenced by Robert Kennedy's suit against Facebook pending in California about the same set of allegations. So I think if they make better allegations, they may be able to get to the discovery stage and find out just how much these big tech giants were operating at the direct request of government actors. I'm Dave Rubin and joining me today is a trial lawyer and an all-star political gambler, also a primo promoter of Locals.com, Robert Barnes. Welcome back to the Rubin Report. Glad to be here. I am glad to have you, man. I didn't realize until literally two minutes ago that we have not spoken uh, in a one-on-one -on -one forum for over two years. Um, is the world getting better or worse in those two years? Well, you know, back then I was taking a lot of controversial cases. So it was, you know, Ale we were talking about Alex Jones, the Covington kids, Wesley Snipes, Ralph Nader, Girls Gone Wild, all the all the rest of it. So I decided to take less controversial cases. So I took Donald Trump uh, during the elections, uh, Amy Cooper in New York, Kyle Rittenhouse, self-defense. But yeah, the world just keeps getting crazier, particularly from a legal political perspective. Yeah. So what put you on the map? Is it fair to say that what originally sort of put you on the map in a bigger sense was, was the bet on Trump? Is that really the thing that kind of got you out there as more of a public lawyer? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, basically, I'd always been done a lot of tax work. But for a lot of reasons, I didn't need that to be high profile and had done a lot of civil rights work, but had not made myself a public figure. But uh, people had followed the Trump bet because it was a big bet and the rest it became a public figure. And during the Trump time period, it became more important to be a public uh, figure defending certain issues in the court of public opinion. Yeah. And now you're an all star YouTuber who hangs out like this all day, like world <laughs> World come at me. So I want to get into some of those cases that, that you've covered, obviously, but let's start with, with Trump's current lawsuit, because just in the last you know, 10 days or so, he has announced that he's basically going after big tech in a class action lawsuit, and not just big tech, but actually some of the heads of these companies. So can you give people the 101, the sort of must have info on what the lawsuit actually is, and then we'll talk about the chances of it succeeding. Sure. So basically, Trump has brought a claim saying that they, all the big tech giants conspired with various government actors to kick him off of and exclude him from all of their platforms. And he is saying that they did so as state actors and thus are subject to First Amendment limitations. So that's the core of his claim against Google, against Facebook and against Twitter, as well as Dorsey, Zuckerberg and the Google CEO individually. So the key there seems to be some kind of collusion with the government. He's not arguing just that Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram all sat down and maybe did something, but somehow there was a connection to the government. Do you have any idea if there's evidence of that or, or what he could actually prove that would show it? I think uh, they may in an amended complaint make better allegations factually, but there is inferential evidence that Fauci, Pelosi, and Harris had specifically requested each of those platforms to remove Trump from those platforms. Some of that's based on some of their public statements. Some of that's based on some of the emails that came out from the FOIA request with Fauci and Zuckerberg. There was much more collusion. Some of that is indirectly referenced by Robert Kennedy's suit against Facebook pending in California about the same set of allegations. So I think if they make better allegations, they may be able to get to the discovery stage and find out just how much these big tech giants were operating at the direct request of government actors. Right, so before we get to discovery, which obviously is the interesting part of this, why is he doing it as a class action and not just him going after them for how he was, you know, in his, in his eyes, uh, you know, basically wronged? I think his purpose in this, his heart is in the right place. I think some of the lawyers involved might not have the technical skill to translate that well because there could have been a class action alleging that big tech is really part of the public digital square. Uh, and the public square has just moved from the physical world to the digital world and from the geographic world to the online world. And he would have had, I think, a strong claim on that, at least to challenge existing law and to extend it. They didn't really do that. So the, this particular class action 
isn't the strongest because what he's alleging really is that he was targeted because he was President Trump. And he's trying to bring all these other people in that have been targeted for political reasons, but they're not President Trump. So from a pure legal perspective, technically, it's not the best claim. Right. So can you explain like kind of just how the process works? So he now brings this class action. And how does it get to the judge? And like, is it one judge that will decide if this thing can go to trial? Effectively, here's what's likely to happen. They'll likely try to move to transfer it from the Southern District of Florida, where he filed it, to the Northern District of California on grounds that it's a term of service dispute. At least Twitter, probably Facebook and YouTube will try that as well. They he'll, that'll be his first Me meaning you get it, Meaning you get it to Cali because that's where they're based. Exactly. Yeah. And if they and they have some contractual language that can, depending on the nature of the claim, uh, require that if they say so, they, they're going to want a different district court judge assigned and a different court of appeals. They'll want the Ninth Circuit, not the Eleventh Circuit. They'll also want any slap law to apply, which doesn't apply in Florida, but it would apply in California because that would make Trump responsible for the other side's legal feeds if he loses. So that will be his first big battle. The second battle will be a motion to dismiss before it ever gets to class certification stage. If he wins at that level, then he gets discovery. And then after that, a single judge usually decides whether or not there's class certification. So he's got a, several procedural hurdles to get through first. Right, so who decides that part? Because it seems to me that this thing, even if Trump doesn't win, if it at least gets to discovery, we're gonna find out something. You know, if, if Twitter and Facebook and YouTube have to open up the books and really show, oh, members of Congress or the Senate were, or the administration were actually DMing people, about, you know, coordinating some of this stuff or whatever else it's showing related to manipulating algorithms or shadow banning or anything else. It's like, that's the win, even if it's not a legal win. So how, how do we at least get there? Basically, he needs to enhance the complaint. So I think he should add some lawyers to the team like Alan Dershowitz, like Harmeet Dillon. Harmeet Dillon is a very good state action Twitter claim currently yeah. pending. So uh, add some lawyers who are familiar with this space uh, and change his complaint. His cl complaint as it currently exists won't get him past a motion to dismiss. But if they add to it, I think he has good grounds to allege that these, these individual actors were acting at the direct request of Vice President Kamala Harris and of Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi and maybe of Anthony Fauci in other contexts. And then I think you can get to discovery and you're absolutely right. There's gonna be a lot of revelatory discovery if he can get to that stage. So I hope he improves the case so that he can get to that stage. I sense you think maybe he doesn't have the best legal representatives around him right now, the way you're describing it. Uh, no, the, it, it's one of these groups that's a D.C. based group that their roots are in sort of big oil corporate lobbying. So they're you know, if you wanted a, a regulatory issue on on energy, they're fantastic. First Amendment constitutional issue on big tech. That's not their area of focal point. So I think the these lawyers are lawyers that are unfamiliar with this space and it showed up in the suit. And right now, the, those of us that are familiar in this space that want this lawsuit to move forward are very concerned that, as alleged, this lawsuit is as DOA. So he can improve it, though. He's got plenty of times to amend it. But with Trump, sometimes his personnel <laughs> picks got a little hit or miss. Right. Did you think about picking up the phone and saying, hey, guys, I, I know a little something about this. We have some connections here. Actually, a bunch of us did. And it's just uh, Trump is Trump. So, you know, he makes his decisions at different times. Like, uh, you know, the I've been telling him ever since actually November that uh, he should be on locals. I mean, if you <laughs> want to compete with uh, the, all the big tech people, what better way to monetize Trump's brand? Well, I mean, there's so many different ways he could do this, but he has a lot of other people whispering in his ear. And I think some of the people that are whispering in his ear don't really want him to succeed in his suit. So I think that and it was a problem throughout his four years that there was some, you know, an angel on one side, on one shoulder, a devil on the other. And he doesn't always get the best advice, but people are telling him that now. So I hope he takes corrective action before the case can get dismissed. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversation about law, instead of the nonstop yelling you get everywhere else, check out our law playlist. And if you wanna watch full interviews on a variety of topics, check out our full episode playlist. They're both right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.